husband defended his drunk ex who ruined our wedding, then demanded an apology. He discovered he cheated on her for years. In addition to demanding that I apologize to her, the husband supported his raving drunk, who was responsible for ruining our wedding. After some time had passed, he discovered that he had been unfaithful to her for a number of years. My now husband Josh, who is 26 years old, and I, who is 23 years old, got married last week. Initially, everything was stunning in its beauty. After being married to the person I had a crush on in high school, I was overjoyed. To me, it seemed as if my childhood fantasy had been realized. When I was shooting pictures with my bridesmaids, I had the feeling that I was a princess. Nicole, Josh's cousin, was seen with a female, whom I will refer to as Sarah, an individual with whom I am not familiar. At first glance, she appeared to be passive but not hostile toward me. Following the completion of our photographs, we went inside to unwind and have a conversation before I walked down the aisle. Some time later, after the vows had been spoken, I happened to run into Sarah as I was making my way to the table where the food was being served. Although it was obvious that she was under the influence of alcohol, I was able to make out of her garbled words that she was complaining about how crowded the venue was. And then things got worse. As I was doing the grocery shopping for my mother, she told me that she was astonished that Josh had married someone who was similar to me because Josh was capable of doing better than I could. In an effort to shrug it off, I told her that I was extremely fortunate to have him in my life. Despite the fact that the interaction left me feeling sad, I dismissed it as nothing more than her being intoxicated. I then started drinking myself, and I quickly forgot about the situation. After some time had gone, I was in a good mood. We were dancing, along with all of the other visitors, including my husband and I. There was a sudden smashing sound that I heard near the food table, and all of us ran over to check what was going on. When I looked over, I noticed Nicole attempting to calm Sarah down while she was crying uncontrollably onto the ground. In addition to ripping the decorations off of my wedding cake, she had completely destroyed it. When I saw that my wedding cake had been entirely destroyed, it shattered my heart. However, when I attempted to inquire about the situation, Sarah began yelling and cursing at me without any response. Because I was intoxicated and disoriented, I began to yell back at her and gave my husband the order to kick her out of the house. He expressed his reluctance to do so, and he suggested that she should be permitted to remain because she was a friend. He and I got into a heated argument, and I told him that she had destroyed my wedding. My husband and Nicole were ultimately the ones who were able to succeed in bringing her under control and convincing her to return home. When my husband returned, he appeared to be upset with me over the fact that Nicole had left with Sarah. I was utterly disconnected from him for the remainder of the evening, and I could tell that the mood had become uncomfortable for all of my visitors. My husband gave me a lecture the next day about how I had damaged Sarah's feelings and asked that I apologize to her over the situation. During our argument, he went to sleep on the couch. I tried to talk to him about it in the days that followed, but he shut me down and simply told me that I was being overly dramatic about the situation. Things eventually started to calm down, and I tried to talk to him about it. Since the day I got married, I haven't even seen Sarah once. I am really perplexed as to why she would react in such a manner. That my husband does not see things from my point of view is hurtful to me. Despite the fact that she was intoxicated, she managed to spoil my special day, and as a result, I am unable to recall any joyful memories because I can only think about that particular event. My apologies for the lengthy read. We appreciate your attention. The first update is that I'm going to make an effort to try to keep this as brief as possible. Although I am aware that this update is not going to be particularly shocking, I would still like to provide a more in-depth explanation of myself. I began doing some thinking and taking into consideration the responses that everyone had given, and then I contacted Nicole. I ordered her to tell me the truth, and she eventually complied with my request. It was all of your faults. It was a thing between Sarah and Josh. He did, in fact, cheat on me. A little bit of background information, Josh and I have known each other since we were in elementary school. Our relationship began during our first year of high school, and we have been together since childhood. He was the start of everything for me. The manner that I adore him is unlike any other love I've ever had. In spite of the fact that Nicole validated my assumptions, I did not want to trust her. My heart fell when she told me that he had cheated on me, and I haven't been able to break the feeling of nausea since then. All of a sudden, I am utterly heartbroken. As to how I could have been so naive. The things that were placed out in front of me were completely hidden from my view. 
do you even believe this? Sarah, on the other hand, attended a different high school than both Joshua and I did. Nicole introduced Josh and Sarah to each other. Nicole was aware that he was already in a relationship, but she has never liked me because I am a mixed race. From the time he was dating me until he graduated from high school, he was dating Sarah. Following our graduation, he severed his relationship with Sarah. Despite the fact that he was not cheating on me at the time, Sarah was still upset over Josh ghosting her, and she decided to take her anger out on me. I didn't want to think that the person I treasure the most, the love of my life, and the entire universe could do something like this to me. Nicole brought her to the wedding. Because she knew Sarah wanted some kind of retribution. I was absolutely unaware of the fact that he had been unfaithful to me for a period of four years. However, I can't continue to look at him in the same manner. I don't want to lose him. Every every time, he has been so kind, so kind, and so concerned about me. As far as I am aware, he is completely unaware of it, and I am unsure of how to bring it up to him. I wish that this was not the case. I really wish that I could suddenly awaken from this terrifying nightmare. Whenever I confront him, I will keep you updated if anything significant takes place, and I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who has been kind to me. If I could wish this upon anyone, I would not. Please allow me to begin by elaborating on a few points before we move on. People are often wondering how he could have been loving and caring if he hurt you in this way. He takes care of my mother, he offers to pay for everything, he always tells me how much he loves me, he gives me flowers every week, he brings me lunch to work, he cooks for me, he takes me on a fancy date once a month, he takes care of my mother, and he always tells me how much he loves me. He had a way of making me feel really secure. In the event that I had known that he would put me through all of this, I would have never married him. I am aware that this narrative is difficult to accept, nonetheless, it is not merely a narrative, this is my reality. In addition, it was discovered that the cheating had been going on for a period of time that was closer to six years. It is true that she was the only girl he had an affair with. I am disheartened by the fact that Sarah has ruined my marriage, but I am aware that Josh is ultimately to blame for this. In any case, Josh is scheduled to leave work at 10 o'clock at night, so I remained up late to talk to him. It came as a complete surprise to me that Nicole kept her word to me that she would not inform him that I was aware of the situation. As soon as he walked through the door, I extended an invitation to him to join me at the kitchen table, where I was sitting. I assured him that I was aware of everything. The situation began with me yelling and ranting at him, but it eventually evolved into me pleading with him to demonstrate to me that what he was saying was not accurate. Indeed, it was true, and after some time had passed, he admitted to everything that had happened. Hearing him say that brought everything into sharper focus. He made an attempt to claim that because it occurred while I was in high school, it shouldn't have a significant impact on me and that it was a completely foolish error. I agree, it was a foolish error that he ignored for more than five years. I am aware that we were young, but he had a more mature perspective. In addition to pleading with me to remain, he expressed his regret for everything that he had caused me to go through. Even though I told him how much I love him, I am unable to continue being with him. In response to my question about why he chose to defend her over me, he explained that he didn't want to upset her since he was aware of how psychotic she can be. It is clear to me that he still loves her, or at the very least, cares about her, because he would continue to defend her after all these years. I can't just completely remove him from my life just yet. He is the owner of both the house that we live in and the car that I drive. I have not only lost my marriage, but I have also lost absolutely everything in my life. After I made it quite apparent to him that I was going to be leaving him, he became enraged, and we began to argue. He made an attempt to defend himself by saying that at least he wasn't still cheating, but I don't care, the pain is still the same. Having called my mother and informed her of everything, she has agreed to let me stay with her for the time being. Due to the fact that I reside in Pennsylvania, I have 60 days to finalize my marriage, which is something that I intend to accomplish. Josh is persistently attempting to call me, but I'm not picking up the phone. He taught me what love is, but now he has destroyed the love that I had for him. This is the kind of person I would never consider dating or trusting again in my entire life. In addition to the fact that my wedding was ruined, my entire life has been ruined as well. My house and my car are both in his possession, and he has complete access to my bank account. I am confident that he will battle to keep the pets. I will provide an update to anyone who is interested in knowing when I will go to recover my belongings. Nicole is the only member of his family that is aware of the fact that he cheated on her or anything else regarding the situation. 
it was his father who took me in after I had lost my own parents, and I love them just as much as they loved me. There have been attempts made by Nicole and Sarah to get in touch with me, but I have not responded to them. I would like to make it perfectly obvious that when you are so completely enamored with someone, you never really give any thought to the possibility that the person you love and trust the most in the entire world is cheating on you. My attorney informed me that he was obligated to provide me with everything. I paid for the modification of my bank information, and I should receive it as soon as possible. In addition, my attorney advised me that the best course of action would be to have my marriage annulled if I could provide evidence that I had paid for my vehicle. After then, he is obligated to hand it over to me, but at the moment, I am powerless to take any action about my house or car because they are all legally registered in his name. On the other hand, my attorney is battling for me. I can't help but hope that Josh will hand up the dog to me. In conclusion, I would want to extend my gratitude once more to everyone who has shown me kindness throughout this entire process. Reading comments is a chore for me because the vast majority of them are nasty, and it causes me to keep thinking about the entire scenario. More than you probably realize, I am grateful to each and every one of you who has provided me with support and advice. It has been of great assistance to me in getting through this catastrophic event, and if you hadn't been there to talk some reason into me, I believe that I would have just stayed with him. Now that I am aware that he is not the man I believed I had married, I do not wish for him to continue to be the father of my children. There is a possibility that I will have something fascinating occur, but I am not sure if I will update again. At this time, farewell. Another update, I apologize for the lack of activity, I haven't been feeling very well, but I'm starting to feel a little better today. I am relieved that some of you needed an update since I have one to share with you. In the beginning, Josh made an effort to get me to return to him by attempting to keep my belongings at his house. However, after a day or two, he decided to cease doing that. Fortunately, I was able to get my car, and my ex-husband handed me my dog without me having to take him to court. This is a welcome development. Even though I could have obtained it in any case, the fact that he simply handed it over made things a great deal simpler for me. Despite the fact that my bank information has been updated, he did not attempt to steal any of my money. There is little I can do about the fact that I have lost my home at this time, nonetheless, I have still lost it. I am quite thankful to my attorney because he has put in a lot of effort on my behalf. When I went over to grab my belongings, I had a more relaxed talk with my ex-boyfriend, and as a result, I feel like I've received some closure. After that, we had our last discussion, during which we discussed all of our recollections. In addition to expressing his regret for everything, he stated that he understood the reasons I was leaving him and assured me that he would leave me alone if I requested it. My marriage was declared null and void, yet I'm a little bit heartbroken since it's almost as if it never took place. Now, the reason that Sarah and Nicole were phoning me was because they attempted to convince me that I am a drama queen and that I am destroying his name because of something that occurred many years ago. At this point, I have blocked both of them. The fact that I always give the truth to everyone who inquire about the reasons why our marriage was dissolved is causing him a great deal of distress. The fact that his family and co-workers are aware of how much of a jerk he is is something that he cannot stand. I had no intention of informing his family since I do not believe that it is my responsibility to do so, but they are aware of it now. I was contacted by his parents to apologize and inquire about my well-being after they became aware of what had transpired. The fact that they took me in as their own is something I will be always thankful to them for. They were like my second parents. They are going to be my in-laws, and I am going to miss them very much. Currently, I am residing with my mother, however, I am looking for affordable flats in the surrounding area. Because I've never lived by myself before, I'm fairly terrified of the idea. My ex-girlfriend and Sarah did not get back in touch with one other, and judging by the current state of affairs, I do not intend to do so in the foreseeable future. To those who are wondering why my belongings were in his name, I'd want to say that I didn't anticipate things to turn out this way. He was able to make a lot more money than I did, despite the fact that I trusted him with my life. To let him handle the finances was the best course of action. By following through with his threats to keep my car and other belongings, he has, thankfully, not been able to take advantage of me. I am aware that I am just 23 years old and that I have a great deal of life left in me, but it does not seem like that right now. I am still in a state of shock and cannot deny the fact that what has happened. Despite the fact that I am aware that I will be fine in the long run, this has completely altered my perspective on love. From what ought to have been the happiest day of my life, my life has taken a complete and utter turn for the worse. I am resentful. 
I find myself pondering what would have transpired if I had taken a different course of action, perhaps then he would not have gone through with all of this. In addition, I continue to find excuses for him in some fashion. I'm relieved that I now have a better understanding of who he really is. It makes me sick to my stomach to think that I came so close to having children with him, and that he would have allowed me to go through my entire life without revealing his history of cheating on me. After thoroughly destroying the lives of other people, I don't understand how men like him can claim to be able to sleep soundly at night. It is extraordinary how many of you have experienced something that is comparable to this. My deepest condolences go out to anyone who have experienced such a painful experience. The fact that you guys are attempting to devise strategies of retribution against me has made me laugh out loud. However, I am going to give everything some time to rest because I genuinely appreciate it. Primarily due to the fact that if I did attempt retribution, it would pain me even more. There have been others who have informed me that his kind actions were the bare minimum, but I have never witnessed anyone else doing anything like that. Because my mother and father went through a divorce, I had never witnessed love being shown in such a manner. I was under the impression that it was something that only occurred in Hallmark movies. I would want to express my gratitude to everyone who has sent me messages and remarks of kindness. I have read each and every one of them, and it has been of great assistance to me throughout this entire process. I wish each and every one of you a wonderful day. We are grateful for everything. Moving on to the following tale now. Story 2 A woman produced a handcrafted present for her abusive brother's fiancé, but she was not invited to the wedding ceremony, so I returned the gift she had made for her brother. A lot of my wife, Lena, crochets, and she frequently gives it as presents to her friends and family. When her second oldest brother was married, she sewed a shawl for the bride to wear over her dress in the evening. She did this for the bride. It was a hit with the bride, and ever since then, Lena has been making shawls for other members of her family who are getting married. In the present moment, George, Lena's eldest brother, is getting married once more. Due to the fact that George was abusive to Lena when she was a youngster, she does not have a relationship with him. In contrast, she is courteous but aloof whenever she is required to meet with him. It is not in her best interest to isolate herself from the rest of her family because of George. At work, George and I are friendly, despite the fact that we are not friends outside of the workplace. When George joined my staff, Lena was a strong supporter of this idea. Because my team has a lot of get-togethers with our significant others, I was going to ask for a transfer because I did not want to put Lena in a position where she could be exposed to George. Lena's mother asked her if she could crochet a shawl for George's fiancé and Lena replied that she would be happy to do so. The wedding is a family wedding. In order to avoid Lena having to interact with George, it was decided that after it was completed, I would travel to my place of employment and hand it over to him. At the beginning of this week, the shawl was finished, and I sent an email to George at his place of employment to inform him that I would bring it in today because the wedding is scheduled for tomorrow. This morning, when I arrived at work, I presented George with the shawl and brought to his attention the fact that both Lena and I were looking forward to the wedding. When it was time for lunch, Lena contacted me to inform me that George's fiancé had called her and informed her that she would no longer be invited to the wedding. The reason given was that the location where they are holding the wedding reception is insufficient to accommodate the number of guests that are expected to attend, which is why they are having to make reductions. The wedding invitation, on the other hand, was extended to me. I was irritated by this because it was obvious that they only invited Lena to receive a shawl, which I consider to be really impolite. Due to the fact that Lena is passionate about crocheting, it is highly likely that she would have made one if they had asked her directly to do so. Upon leaving my place of employment, I observed that George was not present at his desk, but the shawl was. Despite the fact that I was still upset that they had used Lena to acquire a shawl, I took it and stuffed it into my work bag. There was a message that I put on George's desk, in which I informed him that the shawl and I would no longer be attending the event because Lena was no longer invited. In order to avoid squandering the value of having a sitter, I informed Lena of what I had done and inquired as to whether or not she would be interested in going out instead. The fact that I had taken the shawl was making Lena angry since it was raising a commotion in the family group chat that she was participating in. People were calling her petty because I had taken it back. Lena has requested that I return it to her. I don't believe that I ought to. Lena's generosity is not something they deserve. On the other hand, I do not want Lena to be annoyed with me because of George and a shawl while we are talking about it. If I return the shawl, am I doing the wrong thing? Edit, 
I have sent a message to the group chat informing them that I have taken it, and if they deserve to be angry with anyone, it should be me. However, I would also do it again because no one has the right to be impolite to Lena. Considering that I am not entirely sure how to post an update in this thread, I will put it here in the event that anyone is interested in reading it. I have not returned the shawl to George, which is something that everyone will be relieved to learn. A portion of the reason I have not returned it is due to the fact that he is currently on his honeymoon. I wouldn't give it back, however, even if he wasn't the one who stole it. Towards the end of that day, Lena expressed her regret for being angry with me. She expressed her gratitude to me for taking the shawl back, stating that she should not have consented to make it in the first place and that she should have never. I had a lengthy conversation with Lena regarding her family and the way in which they do not treat her. When it came to her family, I assured her that I would always be there for her and provide her support because I would be there for her when she was unable to do so. I was curious about her thoughts on being in lower contact, so I questioned her about it. In the beginning, we had only a limited amount of contact with George, his now wife, and her mother. During the conversation, Lena expressed her desire to cut off all communication with George, his wife, her mother, and all other individuals with the exception of her second oldest brother and his wife, Michael and Sarah. She stated that she wanted to do this because of how toxic the group chat had become, which she has since left, and she has demonstrated to me that she has left and deleted the conversation. Everyone else has been blocked, with the exception of Michael and Sarah. Just before I bring up the subject of treatment for Lena once more, I'm going to wait a couple of weeks. Due to the fact that I do not want her to feel pressured into anything, I would want for the dust to settle a little bit. Michael is the one who validated the statement that the wife told Lena about there not being enough space. Michael had advised him some weeks ago that they were well under the amount of people that could be accommodated at their location. It was nothing more than an attempt to exert authority over others. I am aware that several Redditors were worried about my professional life once I adopted the shawl. I had a conversation with my manager and informed him that Lena had crafted a shawl for George's wife. However, they had provided an excuse for not asking her to the wedding the day before the wedding, and I decided to take it back. After I informed my manager of this, he let out a long sigh and then proceeded to tell me that he hoped I hadn't obtained the shawl because George had the potential to make things more challenging for me. But he would have done the exact same thing because George is a nightmare. He would have said the same thing. As a result of the fact that it was not beneficial for Lena to be in his presence, I informed him that I would like to transfer to a different club. It was his suggestion that I leave it with him, and he would figure out what he could do with it. In the event that George had been assigned to my team for the first time, I would have relocated, however, Lena strongly advised me against doing so since she did not want me to upset her family. After receiving a response on Monday, I was informed that I would be transferred to a different team at the conclusion of the week. This other team is in severe need of someone, and when my boss reached out to other managers to inquire about whether or not anyone had an internal vacancy, this manager bit his arm off trying to find information. On the day of the wedding, Michael spoke with Lena over the phone and inquired about the arrangements that we had for the day. Michael was aware that Lena was not invited to the wedding, and he correctly made the assumption that I would not attend if she was not invited. That we were going to go out for dinner and drinks was something that Lena shared with him. He informed her that it seemed like a plan, and he instructed her to send him a text message with the location of our dinner. After witnessing George, his wife, and their mother's emotional breakdown in the group chat, Michael and Sarah made the decision to miss the wedding. It appears that they proceeded to hurl insults at Lena despite the fact that she had exited the group chat without responding. The moment when the family turned against me and our children was the moment that Michael and Sarah made the decision that they would not be attending the wedding at all. The only reason they were going to attend the ceremony was because Lena had not been invited to it. They sent George a message informing him that their aircraft had been delayed and that they would not be able to make it to the destination. However, this was merely a pretext that they made, and George did not respond to their request. Their flight was not delayed. With his own eyes, Michael had witnessed George's mistreatment of Lena. He had made an effort to safeguard Lena in any way that he could, but being a child himself, he was only capable of doing so to a limited extent. In addition, he did not want to be the one who was on the receiving end of George's heated temper. When he was an adult, he made the decision to move away from his family and solely keep in touch with Lena. He did this because he had the opportunity to do so. As a result, we went out with Michael and Sarah, and it turned out to be a much more enjoyable evening than we would have had at the wedding. There were no insulting remarks, no insulting remarks, and nothing else. 
Lena was overjoyed because she was finally able to meet Sarah, which was something that she had been looking forward to. It was all I wanted was for Lena to be content. I want nothing more than for my family to be content in life. Since Michael posted a picture of the four of us together having drinks on Facebook with a caption about how he was choosing Lena over George going forward because she does not use people to get what they want like George did over a crocheted shawl, both Michael and Sarah's phones kept going off throughout the night. Mill and George kept messaging them in an angry manner and expressing their displeasure with their absence. Given the joyful texts I had from Michael last week after he had heard back from a cousin who attended the reception, Michael revealed to me later that he did this to annoy George because he knew that George would have a meltdown at the reception, and then his in-laws would be able to see what an ass he actually is. George went through a complete and utter breakdown. Despite the fact that Lena is aware of this post, she believes that it would be inappropriate for me to upload photographs of her work. It was a possibility that she would unravel the shawl, nevertheless, she found it difficult to undo all of her hard work, which is something that I can understand. The reason for this is that I did not figure it out on my own and informed George about it. There was a shawl from Ikea. That, in addition to the fact that I didn't want to confront a furious Lena after having a conversation with Sarah about what to do with it. It is her intention to keep it, but she will color it. She has made up her mind about this. During the Christmas celebration with the family, Michael proposed that she wear it. It is not going to take place because we are not going to be able to visit Lena's family throughout the holiday season. In accordance with what I had previously said, Michael and I are both at the same degree of pettiness. In response to my initial article, a few individuals brought up the possibility that I may wear it to work after George returns. I did not show Lena a significant number of his comments. She does not require the company of individuals who refer to her as a doormat or who tell her that she needs to develop a spine. It is evident that such individuals have not had their spirit entirely destroyed by the others who are supposed to love them without conditions, nor have they been fully excluded from taking part in family gatherings. After George completed his studies at the university, Lena was left behind at home. She was eight years old when she left her home alone for the entire day. The majority of Christmas was spent in her bedroom since her grandma did not want Lena to be present because she believed that her presence would just make George more agitated. Lena would sneak out of the house and spend time with me and my family up until the age of 14. It was just that Lena was not included in anything. Because her father used to spend a lot of time away from home, he was completely unaware of what was going on. Rather of assuming that Lena would simply remain in her room because she was accustomed to being neglected by her family, he simply thought that she enjoyed having her own space.